Hello, my beautiful people. So in this video, I want to talk to you about a PowerShell module I wrote specifically for working with the events of Sysmon for Linux. So as you know, Microsoft released Sysmon for Linux, which is a godsend, I have to say, because when you have ever dealt with AuditD, it's not fun. It drives you to drinking. Believe me, it's not fun. So um, yeah, so if you're working with Sysmon for Linux and you have to work with all of those events that are saved actually into Syslog, this PowerShell module will allow, allow you to actually create those events and get them as objects and you will be able to work with them. I've actually updated the Sysmon guide. So I'm going to be putting the link to the Sysmon guide where I updated the guide to not only cover Sysmon for Windows, but also covers Sysmon for Linux. And I think that you will find it actually pretty useful. So let's get to it. The module is actually available from the PowerShell gallery. We can install directly from the PowerShell gallery into any version, any of the latest versions of PowerShell actually. So that means that if we're running PowerShell 5.1, in a Windows 10 system, we can install this module. It will also run Linux, Mac OS, in addition to Windows, uh, if you, we're installing PowerShell 7. Now the gallery tells us that if we want to install this module, the only command that we need to run is install module system Linux util. So let's do an install on this Ubuntu machine. Copy that command. Let's make a bit bigger our prompt here. So we're going to run this command. I'm going to do the force parameter also so I don't get prompted during the installation. Module is already installed. So now the only thing I have to do is if I want to list the commands, I can use the get command commandlet. I'm going to do dash module sysmon linux dot util. And here I can see all of the different functions that are available to me from this specific PowerShell module. As you can see, most of the functions here are specifically to get these event types that relate to the version of sysmon that works on Linux. The other one that we have here, the outlier, is to actually turn those objects into a rule. I use this a lot when I want to normalize my rule capture, where I want to kind of like filter out um, what is the known good behavior. I only want to capture specifically the outliers. This simplifies my rule in terms of I do not know, uh, I don't do not need to know each and every different attack technique that is out there. What I'm actually doing is I'm just looking for what doesn't fit in this system. And then I'm able to kind of like capture those outliers that I can look at. And then as I'm doing um, purple team type exercises, I'll be able to then tailor more specific rules for some of the attacks. But for initial rule, normalizing my rule set, it's a lot simpler. Now, each one of these functions is going to turn the output of the syslog file, specifically the events that get saved by sysmon, into objects. This means that I can use for object select for each. That means that I can parse just like with any, uh, um, any other commandlet inside of PowerShell. I can just parse those objects. I can do whatever I need with them without the need of doing greg, awk, cut or any of those text manipulation commands. If we take a look right now at syslog at var we can see that each one of these events are actually being placed as single line XML, which makes it quite a bit, not too difficult, but a bit more difficult to parse, depending on your level of experience in Linux. For me, i rather have it as an object and simplify my life. So right now, if I take a look at the Sysmon configuration, 
sudo Okay, look, I'm capturing process create network connect raw access file create. So let's take a look at network connect. I'm able to pull all the network connection events here. So let's say I want to see which are the processes are doing the most amount of connections in this system and to what port. So that would be destination port and image and let's also do protocol so since everything's an object i can actually do select image destination port and i can do protocol okay. um, i want the uniques for this so i can see that system d resolved it's one of the ones that is the noisiest one of all. Uh, we have PowerShell doing DNS resolution. We have it connecting to HTTPS. We have Network Manager doing UDP connections. We have SnapD doing the same. So let's take a look. I want to see for systemd resolve to what it is actually connecting to. So let's take a look. And I'm missing a forward slash. Want to do destination IP, destination IP in this case. Um, so let's do select. I want the destination IP property. I want it to be unique. And I can see that um, one of these is the DNS server and the other is local loopback and also DNS resolution. So probably one of the things I can actually do is I can create a rule from this to simplify my life and simply remove all of that noise. So if I wanted to create different rule sets for this, one of the things I can actually do is in addition to destination IP, I can simply do image, everything's unique. And since what I'm getting back is an object, if I go here to get member, one of the things that you'll notice is that what I'm getting back is actually a custom object with different properties and select just simply strips out all of the other properties that are there and just leaves those that I specified. So I can pipe this into convert to sysmon rule. And now I have a rule set here that I can copy and paste in my exclude to minimize all of that noise from system D resolve D. So if anything lands in the system and they want to be stealthy, and they decide, oh, look, system D resolve D always generates network traffic. So we're going to kind of like load into that, or we're going to mimic its behavior, trying to kind of blend in since that behavior is not the known behavior that we know in, um, we're going to be able to see it. We're going to be able to detect a malicious action here. Now, one of the things that happens is that sys syslog actually rotates constantly on the machine. So let's see if we have some uh, get raw access events. We don't have any, but if we take a look at war log, and we just simply do syslog and an asterisk here, we'll see that log rotate has actually saved multiple copies of sysmon. Uh, of syslog, sorry. Uh, so those are JSIP, and we can process those. In fact, one of the things I can do is just go here, syslog D, 
I can even pipe it directly into my own functions where I can specify each one of these via the syslog parameter. So I can do sysmon Linux raw access. And I can parse all of those events from each one of those files if I wanted to. So let's do something. Again, they're objects. I want to see select image user and device. Make it simpler for me. I'm going to do unique. And then I'm going to format this in a list. I can see that we have system D UDEV connect to different loop devices. So this could actually be a wall card of dev loop with using contains. I see that the other one is U disk. I see I have system GTPD auto generator. We have drop probe that goes into each one of the SDAs. So it's going to be very easy for me just to create a rule set from this, tune that rule set to get all of this noise out. And let's say that somebody's going after my SSHD file or somebody's going after a configuration file for one of my servers on the machine and they're just trying to do a raw access directly to the device itself. They're going to be able, but I'm going to be able to see it, which is the important part. That's why we're actually using Sysmon for Linux. Now, each one of the different functions contains help information. So I can actually do help. I can look, oops, on the help information process create. As you can see, I have the different parameter sets. I have a description, a synopsis. I have information of each one of the different parameters. Here we can see that for syslog file, I can provide multiple syslog files and it has a default value of bar log syslog. I can pass this information to uh, via the uh, pipe, either by value or by property name. I can filter by process GUI, process ID, log on GUI, log on ID, I can give it an image file. And as we can see, it accepts wall cards. So I can use wall cards for my search in the case of an image file. I can do command line. And I can also do wall cards if I want to search for this um, using wall cards. Current directory. So as you can see, it allows me quite a bit of flexibility inside of a Linux system when I want to leverage Sysmon for Linux. So this is the end of the video. I really hope that you guys like this. Remember to like and subscribe. If you have any feedback, you can send it to carlos underscore Perez at dot operator.com.